JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 5th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, today I will talk about uh, the continuation of the equity rebound, also the Bank of Canada uh, meeting we had yesterday where the bank decided a, a 50 basis points cut as the FOMC did uh, on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, I will talk why, I will explain why the Canadian dollar uh, slid on the decision. And then I will talk about uh, the OPEC and the uh, major non-OPEC uh, producers meeting we have in Vienna. The meeting starts today and ends tomorrow. As for the rest of the events, we have the US factory orders for uh, January, the US uh, unit labor costs index for, uh, for the fourth quarter of 2019, the US initial jobless claims for last week, and we also have six speakers on the agenda for today and uh, tonight during the Asian morning uh, Friday. Now, as always, let's start with the performance of uh, the greenback. Uh, the dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained versus the Canadian dollar, the euro and the Swedish krona in that order, while it underperformed against the pound, the kiwi and the Aussie. It was uh, found virtually unchanged versus the Swiss franc, the yen and the Norwegian krona. Uh, now, the strengthening of the risk-linked currencies, Aussie and Kiwi, uh, combined with the relative weakness of the safe havens, the Swiss franc and the yen, suggests that risk appetite remains supported for another day. Indeed, major EU indices kept trading in green territory uh, yesterday, perhaps on expectations that other central banks including the ECB, will follow the footsteps of the FOMC in easing policy to fight the coronavirus's economic impact. Investors increased further uh, their risk exposure during the US session, perhaps due to a second double cut, this time by the Bank of Canada. The strong performance uh, of uh, Joseph Biden in the Democratic nomination campaign may have also been a reason for buying uh, US uh, stocks. So you can see here that the Dow surged 4.53%, the S&P 4.22% and Nasdaq 3.85%. Uh, Another uh, catalyst for higher uh, US stock prices may have been the US House of Representatives uh, agreement over an 8.3 billion US dollars uh, bill to fight the virus, with the legislation being sent for approval in the, in the Senate. Now, the positive investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today as well with uh, Japan's Nikkei 225 and China's Shanghai Composite gaining 1.09 and 1.94% respectively. Now back to the currencies. The Luni was uh, the main loser among the G10s, coming under strong uh, selling interest after the Bank of Canada decided to cut its benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points, bringing, bringing, it, uh, bringing it down to 1.25%. Uh, and mimicking the Fed uh, in cutting uh, rates by, uh, by 50 basis points. Uh, officials also noted that the coronavirus is a material negative shock to the Canadian and global economic outlooks. And uh, they also added that uh, they remain ready to ease further if needed. 
So, um, expectations were for a 25 basis points cut at this meeting and that's why the loonie may have tumbled off on the delivery of, of, a, of a double uh, decrease. Now, officials readiness to ease further if needed may have also waited on the currency. Uh, as for our view, as we noted yesterday, the path of uh, least resistance for the loony remains to the downside. We stick to our guns that uh, central bank rate cuts may not be enough to offset the economic damages caused by the fast spreading of the coronavirus and anything suggesting uh, that this is the case may trigger another round of uh, risk aversion which could hurt oil prices and thereby the Canadian dollar. Let's not forget that Canada is the world's uh, seventh largest oil producing nation and the fourth in terms of exports. As for today, Looney and oil traders are likely to lock uh, their gaze on the meeting between OPEC and major non-OPEC oil producing nations in Vienna. The meeting concludes tomorrow. The so-called OPEC Plus group has been already curbing output by 1.7 million barrels per day, a deal that expires in the end of this month. That said, lower demand due to the coronavirus has led the Joint uh, Technical Committee to recommend an extra, an extra output cut of 600k barrels per day. However, it seems that this number was not enough for market participants who allowed crude prices to continue tumbling after the announcement. According to reports, that number is now insufficient for some of the group's members as well, one of which is Saudi Arabia. Sources said that uh, those, member are, those members are considering an output cut of 1 million barrels per day, a deal that should uh, run throughout the second quarter. There were also fresh reports yesterday suggesting that OPEC is pushing for more than 1 million barrels per day. However, uh, other sources were quick to respond and say that Russia has opposed to anything above 1 million. Now, as uh, for our view, taking all this information, we believe that the market consensus may be between 600k and 1 million. Thus, anything within that range is unlikely to result in a major market reaction in oil prices and the Canadian dollar. For a decent rebound to occur, producers may need to deliver something above and beyond 1 million. Now, in case the number is below 600k, or in the extreme case of no new cuts, oil prices as well as the Luni are likely to tumble instantly, accelerating their prevailing uh, downtrends. Now, as for today's events, during the US session, uh, we get uh, the US factory orders for January, the unit labor costs index for the fourth quarter, and the initial jobless claims for uh, last week. Factory orders are expected to have slid 0.1% month over month after rising 1.8% uh, in December, while the labor costs index is anticipated to have slowed to 1.4% quarter over quarter from 2.5% from in the third quarter. Initial jobless claims are forecast to have declined somewhat to 250k and 15k, excuse me, uh, from 219k the week before. We have also six speakers on the agenda. Today we will get to hear from Bank of England Governor Mark Carney, Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Polos, and Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane. Tonight, during the Asian morning, three Fed speakers will step up to the rostrum. Those are Dallas uh, President Robert Kaplan, Minneapolis President Neil Kashgari, and New York President John Williams. We will pay close attention to those speeches as they may provide um, hints on whether the Bank of England is also considering to cut when it meets uh, next, and when the Bank of Canada and the FOMC may be planning to act again. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye from me and have a great uh, day. JFT, just fair and direct.